Now let's go to the direct labor variance. Direct labor variance, what is happening? The budgeted labor cost for B was 10.20. This is what standard price or standard cost. I'm using this SP, but you need to understand it's a cost. So standard price that we are paying to labor is 10.20 per unit. This was our budgeted cost for the labor. Actual labor cost were 10.50. Okay, budgeted activity is also given. Budgeted activity is labor was supposed to produce 20,000 units. Then actual labor cost were 10.50. Actual price is 10.50 per unit. This is actually what we paid to the labor to produce one unit. And then the actual activity is 22,000 units. Now first calculate the total variance. So to calculate the total labor variance, compare budgeted against the actual. So budgeted activity into standard price, how much this will be? 20,000 units into 10.20. How much we will get? Oh, so I did the whole thing. Twenty-seven. Two zero four thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Two hundred four thousand. Yeah. My difference has come out as twenty-seven thousand. Twenty-seven thousand. How activity budgeted activity is twenty thousand per unit is ten point two zero. So two zero four. This is two hundred four thousand. Yes, this is 24,000, my difference okay. for the two. Okay. Then actual activity into actual price. Actual activity is 22,000 units. And this is 10.50. So 22,000 into 10.50. This will be 31,000. How much is the difference? Okay, minus two. Wait, 27? Yes, 27,000. Is it favorable or adverse? Uh, it is cost. adverse okay. because it's cost 27,000 more than mm -hmm. budgeted. Very good. So this yeah. is adverse. Why? Our budgeted cost was that we need to pay to our all of the labor 204,000. But actually, we paid $27,000 more than that. So total, we got... 27,000 of adverse variance. Now let's see the activity and the price variance. Price mean cost variance. Okay, activity variance. Again, compare the activity. Budgeted activity minus the actual activity into the standard price. Budgeted activity is 20,000 units. That's what labor was supposed to produce. Actual activity is 22,000, what the units actually produce. And standard mm -hmm. price that we were supposed to pay to the labor, 10.2C. So 20,000 20, minus 22,000 into 10.20. So this is 20,400. Is it favorable or adverse? Uh, it's cost 20,400 more, so it's adverse. It's adverse. Why it at worst? Because here the budget was to produce 20,000 units or the hours you can understand for easier understanding. Labor was supposed to work 20,000 hours and labor actually worked 22,000 hours. Labor worked more than they were supposed to work. Okay, let's talk about the cost now. Compare the actual price with the standard price or budgeted price, and I'm calling it price, but it's a cost. So actual price minus standard price multiply with the actual activity. Actual price, the actual cost we were supposed to pay to the labor was 10.50. And uh, the standard price, okay, this, okay, this is standard. Let me write in a order. Oh. Let me fix the slide. Yeah. 
Okay, so actual cost that we were supposed to the labor was 10.50 and act budget was 10.20. We clearly paid more to the labor and actual activity is how much? 20, uh, 22. Yes, sir. So how much will be the difference or variance? 10.50 minus 10.20 into 22,000. So this will be... 6,600. This is favorable or adverse? This is adverse, sir. This is adverse. Now let's write down a summary here. Activity variance of the labor. This is 20,400. The cost variance or price variance is 6,600 and both are adverse. And the total is 20,400 plus 6,600, 27,000 at worst. This is exactly same as the total variance that we have calculated. Now, what is happening here? Activity variance, labor put more efforts than they were supposed to put. So they are working extra. And because of that extra work or activity, we paid extra to the labor, maybe possibly to cover up extra hours, we paid extra um, overtime maybe to the labor, which lead to labor cost of an adverse. Clear with this story so far? Yes, sir. Now relate with the whole story. We decreases the selling price. Because of that, there was a sudden increase in a sales demand and we sold more units. To support extra units that we sell, we did more production or extra production. For extra production, definitely we start buying more raw material at a higher prices, maybe from regular or different supplier. And to support that extra production, we need extra labor hours to work. And because of that extra labor hour to work, we need labor to work for extra time or overtime or extra shifts or holidays maybe. And because of that, we, were, we need to pay some premium cost to the labor like overtime payments or overtime premiums. And that lead to an adverse labor variance. So see, for one favorable variance of a sales revenue, we got adverse in material and we got adverse in labor. So that favorable truly is not a favorable. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. And see, it's, it has a rolling effect. So one favorable can cause other adverse variances. And one adverse can cause other favorable variances. So whenever we are doing variance analysis, we should not look variances in isolation. We need to see the big picture. We need to see the whole picture. That if one variance is favorable, what is the effect of this favorable variance on the other variances? If sales revenue variance is favorable, how it will going to affect labor, how it will going to affect material because all are interrelated with each other. We are talking about one operating cycle or production cycle of the organization. Clear with this? Yes, sir. Okay. There is one more question. If you want to report variance as a percentage, we already practiced this one. So you can attempt it at home. Yes, sir. 